zebrastripe.com. I'm going to walk through how to configure Zebra Stripe facility on Sony A7R5 here uh, with the goal of having the Zebra Stripes appear at one-third stop beyond the ideal ETTR exposure exposed to the right. I've previously determined that these are the correct values um, and so this is how you would do something really really useful with your metering if you want to shoot optimal raw captures. This is not oriented to the JPEG shooter because this will give you a much too bright image. Alright, so um, the uh, zebra stripe setup is down here in, uh, let's zoom that in a little bit, um, it's exposure slash color zebra display and you've got, you can turn it on or off. Uh, when it's on you have a custom one and a custom two and you also have a default of 100 that's also there so you can, you, you can uh, pick um, custom one or custom two. Now what I'm recommending is you configure custom one to 100 plus and for use with ISO 50 and custom two to 109 plus for use with ISO 100. There's a reason for this in that these match up to what you need to not blow out at ISO 50 and ISO 100 respectively. But why would you want to use ISO 50 at all? Um, well, there's a very good reason. Um, when we go uh, into actual captures, uh, on the left we have ISO 50, and uh, this is the histogram we're seeing. You see that the image is of a normal brightness, and the histogram is, looks very reasonable. Over on the right we have ISO 100, and the image is um, too bright, will make it difficult to examine for detail, for starters, and the histogram looks all jammed up and you'd be scared that you'd blow your shot if you had this one. But if you look at these, they're both sh shot at six tenths of a second at f6.3, six tenths of a second at f6.3. So in the raw file, they're identical, no difference. And so when you process them, you can, you'll get the, the same result. However, on the camera, You've got this problem. You've got a camera that shows you this histogram that looks all jammed up and like you toasted the file. The image that's too bright, and if you are shooting RAW plus JPEG, or you are going to get a bright JPEG, and you're not going to like that. So, um, I'm, my recommendation is to use ISO 50 along with the appropriate Zebra value to get not only the correct exposure but a JPEG. You know, if it's a plus JPEG, you get a JPEG, and you get a histogram that looks sensible. Instead of shooting at ISO 100, is here, where you get a too bright image and histogram that scares you. So identical exposures won't make any difference in RAW, but when you're actually looking at the camera, I'd much rather look at this, because that looks like what I want, and it is what I want. I checked this very carefully and under constant studio lighting, and I'm sure it'll hold up outdoors. Uh, looking at things below, this is what you actually, there's a third reason here, which is this is the live view um, image of the subject as I was photographing it. And you can see that the ISO 100 picture is looking pretty darn bright. You, you, you'd not want to shoot this. You'd, you'd feel like that at least, even though this is the correct one. And on the left, it's darker. You can evaluate it. Maybe it's, maybe it's a little dark, but uh, it's actually the, the last one before blowout. And the reason I say that is because I dialed the exposure compensation to plus 1.7 here, plus 0 0.7 here, same exposure, 6 tenths at f6.3, so same exposure, but one more click to um, 8 tenths of a second, and this white patch would start to blow. In fact, you can see these little niggles at the edge. That's the first hint of the zebra stripe uh, effect showing on the edges. One third more stop brighter, <clears throat> and this is going to go all at least half zebra stripey. So the zebra stripes will tell us where to where that cutoff is. So back to those zebra stripes. Stripes you're going to configure them at custom one of 100 and, and make sure you set that um, as your settings if you're doing ISO 50, or if you do want to do um, ISO 100, you set it at 109, and then you'll get then when you go down and actually you're looking at things here, you'll get the zebra stripes in this patch appropriately at either ISO 50 or ISO 100, same, they'll behave the same, and I've confirmed this. So these, those are the figures you want, and they'll give you um, perfect exposures. And your working method is very simple. You just um, get your scene set up, and you start dialing in positive exposure compensation until 
the um, sorry until the image you're looking at shows uh, zebra stripes or you know little um, uh, stuff starts to show up in the little white patches you'll see it in little fine white patches first and then uh, with one more third stop it'll come on pretty strong especially in areas of solid white and if you do that and then take the picture you'll get a perfect raw file uh, it'll be just perfect and uh, that's all you have to do to get perfect ETR uh, let's actually go on to that page um, you configure the uh, zebra stripe facility first decide which ISO you want to use I recommend 50 just because of the JPEG and histogram stuff and then uh, you're gonna validate with, with raw digger too so let's take a look at that um, uh, and I have a discussion of 50 versus 100 but basically at ISO 50 that these issues resolve images in the camera have reasonable brightness JPEGs will be of normal brightness or thereabouts and the RGB histogram will be in much closer agreement with the actual raw file so I validated all this by doing shooting all this stuff and uh, we've looked at that let's look at the camera the camera JPEGs 100 versus uh, 50 if you need to examine an image in the field you, you really want this darker image rather than image with all these whites blown out you can't tell what's going on with that so that's your 50 versus 100 advantage um, when we go to raw digger histograms um, uh, let's take a look at 50 versus 100 well they're identical now, a little niggle there that's probably me in the room blocking the light which is ever so silly but they're basically identical so the raw file is identical at ISO 50 and ISO 100 no difference um, and then the raw digger info same thing it's it's identical if I toggle these you, know, you won't see any there's no difference it, you know, you read percentages overexposure it's zero on both and so on and then um, what about the captures a, a crucial question is do the final processed images differ at ISO 50 versus ISO 100 at least for the Sony a7R5 the answer is no they do not differ which means you can shoot at ISO 50 without any concern that your colors or whatever else will be affected um, and so we're looking at uh, the two images here and if I toggle these I'm toggling them back and forth there's click 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 there's no difference so I'll zoom zoom this up a little bit click 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 see there's no difference in color I've measured it uh, you know they're, they're absolutely done identical so uh, ISO 50 and ISO 100 push to the maximum exposure which I did here uh, don't show any difference so our conclusion is use ISO 50 instead of ISO 100 use the correct setup for the zebra display uh, the cutoff of 100 plus as I showed showed um, and you're good now uh, other cameras like the Nikon Z8 do not have a zebra display facility so you may not be able to use this so um, this is Sony uh, cameras other ones might have a similar facility or might not those that don't you'll probably have to use a histogram so zipping back up uh, I think we're done on the zebra stripes